Hi, I'm Alex Alguacil. In this video I will talk about The Maiden and the Nightingale, La Maja y el Ruiseñor by Granados, which is probably one of the most well-known pieces of the Spanish piano literature. This piece belongs to a larger suite called Goyescas that Granados composed based on the paintings by Goya and the characters and the stories that depict those paintings. The main characters of those paintings are Majos and Majas, which are male and female characters, and Goyescas contains themes and motifs that represent those characters, scenes, their feelings, and a love story between them. It is actually like a piano opera, and in fact Granados went as far as to compose an opera, an opera with a narrative, a story of love and death between these characters. The full name of this composition is Laments or the Maiden and the Nightingale. And in fact, in the opera, the moment in which this music appears is when the Maja is lamenting herself, that in a few hours her lover, the Majo, will face a duel in which he will lose his life. But besides the story of the opera, the music itself of the piano suite already expresses the passionate love and the pain and the suffering of the Maja. This piece is dedicated to Granados' wife, Amparo, while the rest of the pieces from Goyescas are dedicated to great pianists of the time, this is the only one dedicated specially to his wife. This one is also the only piece with a key signature, while to the rest Granados didn't assign any key. So I think these two aspects show some special significance to the relevance of this piece in the complete suite. The theme that Granados uses for La Maja y el Ruiseñor was based on a popular tune that represents the character of the Maja. Granados will harmonize this tune, very melancholic, expressing the sadness of the Maja. Later in the other pieces of Goyescas, this tune will appear again as a memory, as a reminiscence of the past love. To me, the beginning of The Maiden and the Nightingale reminds me somehow the story of the Tristan by Wagner with these tense harmonies that seem to represent this broken and difficult, unattainable love. To me, I get inspiration from listening these tense harmonies from the Tristan to the tense harmonies also from these laments. There is, in fact, a great influence from Wagner's opera, and we can see that by comparing some parts. I feel these augmented chords and these delayed resolutions, these broken harmonies somehow related to this broken love that will turn into death later on.
The title of Laments that Granados gave to this piece is very important because it really describes what this piece is about. The lament motif that was used in many occasions during the history of music by many composers from Purcell to Liszt or even Ligeti. The lament motif was a figuration melody that in early classical music was used in songs that would express laments. It was usually in a minor key and it's very similar and it would evolve into the Andalusian cadence that is used by many Spanish composers. In the original tune we see this motif in the descending part of this theme. And this is how Granados wrote it in the Maiden and the Nightingale. We find the lament motif in the long notes or in the short quick ones. They both represent the Maha's laments and they will show repeated several times during the piece representing different characters. Sometimes loving and tender. Other times dreamy and imaginative, expressivo con molta fantasia. And other times appassionato, angry, showing frustration. There is a slight shorter variation of this motif that Granados will use in many occasions in Goyescas that contains only three descending notes and that he writes in the score with a painful feeling. This ending part of this phrase actually belongs to another motif of Goyescas that shows earlier and that will be presented in many different ways along Goyescas. But here Granados uses it at the end of this motif of painful feeling of La Maja. In Goyescas all the motifs are organically connected because they represent the transformation from one feeling to another. For example, transforming the love into death or sometimes the laments into happiness. As it happens in another passage from another piece that contains this same music from this section from La Maja y el Ruiseñor. Then we have the motif of the nightingale represented by many trills along the piece and especially at the end where the nightingale has its own cadenza. The nightingale that flies freely and to me seems to represent also the Maha's longing to break free from her suffering and her pain. At the end of the piece, the nightingale flies away while the Maha remains in sorrow with her laments.
To finish, I think it's remarkable to note that this lamenting motif that Granados used, he made it richer by adding some extra chords to this progression, like this. And he actually used this progression to harmonize the motif of the maja. I think it is important to know this when performing this composition because it drives the sound forward to this harmonic progression and it becomes easier to phrase the music. This romantic music is certainly very different from the music by Falla or Albeniz, where the rhythm seems to be of more importance. Here the important part is the singing voice, the cantabile, the song, the copla, as it is written on the score many times, and that is why there are many indications about how to direct and phrase the music with accelerandos and ralentandos. Finding the proper amount of rubato and the nuances that match the real spirit of this music can be quite challenging, but at the same time, this flexibility allows us to offer many different interpretations. I hope this video was helpful. These were just some aspects of this piece. There are many more hidden motifs in Goyescas and other remarkable things in this beautiful composition. If you wish to know more about the Goyescas, I will leave in the description the link to another video where I make a in-depth analysis. And you can check also my other videos on Spanish piano music.